bet with the big don't argue. Punters will love that. Download our app today and enjoy tackle-busting benefits with great promos, great odds and same-game multi this footy finals at Palmerbet. Gamble responsibly. For gambler's help, call 1-800-858-858. Welcome, everybody, to Fergo and the Freak. My name is the Glorious League Freak, and I'm here with Julie. And the Parramatta Eels just made the 2022 NRL Grand Final. How excited are you, Julie? I'm absolutely ecstatic. Not that I found it, but I, I, do, I think I'm still in the disbelief stage. Mm-hmm. Like, I just can't believe it happened. I actually tipped against the Eels. Yeah. I like to think that helped them win. The curse of Julie remains. Yeah, the curse of Julie's been pretty rock solid for months and months now, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I, I just need a tip against them in the grand final, and who knows what happens. Yeah. Now, just to warn the listeners, I've had a few. I know Julie's had a few. And it was an interesting game. I thought early on the Cowboys really dominated. They looked really, really good. That forward pass by Mitchell Moses that was allowed to go in the you first half. You mean the one half, that went back? The one that went 50 backwards. metres forward. It went backwards. It went, it went so went far forward, it still hasn't landed fucking forward. That's how far forward it went. It went backwards. They went. They got a try from that, and then uh, Tal Malolo got sent to the sin bin. Yes. And that really... That was a massive point in the game because because those things kind of happen back to back, very close to one another. And I thought with all of the dominance that the Cowboys showed on the field, rather than being piggybacked by the referee, um, that <laughs> they should have been up by more than – they should have been leading the game going into halftime. And at the end of the day, that probably is what, what cost them at the end. Yeah, I was actually quite surprised that – with um, the Cowboys being one player less, that they didn't really let in that many tries from... It was only just the one, wasn't it? Yeah, to Reagan Campbell-Gillard. It was a pretty yeah. soft one, though, wasn't it? Yeah, but just the one try, that was pretty good defending from the Cowboys. I actually at one point tweeted, um, yeah, we're not going to win this. And I think literally 20 seconds later, the Eels got a try. <laughs> <laughs> I think the turning point in the whole game, it was interesting. In the second half, Parramatta come out and put together their probably their most consistent, best sets of six back to back to back in the at the start of the second half. And yep. they ended up getting points put on them. And I was like, this is really bad. But then Matt Daylight makes a terrible error, yeah. turns the ball over, and the Parramatta Eels basically scored directly from that. And that is really the turning point of the game. Yeah, I was actually surprised by Parramatta's um, defence as well. Mm -hmm. Like, they... Sounds really bad coming from a fan, but they never gave up. They kept defending their line. They kept attacking... You know, they kept looking for opportunities. They didn't go missing this until – well, they went missing a couple of times during the game. But towards the end when it actually counted, yeah, they didn't go missing. Like, I know Moses, he had a pretty bad kicking game, mm -hmm. like, in the first half. He had two kicks out on the fall. Or was it the start of the second half? I did miss a, a lot of this game. Yeah. Because my kids wanted to, you know, get up, go to sleep, wake up again. They crawl you out know. of their cages. You, you don't put kids in cages. Oh, okay. They're, they're called cots. <laughs> cots. <It's> the nicest... <laughs> they're basically cages when you think about it. If they had roofs on them, they would 100% be cages, wouldn't they? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I watched a lot of the second half on my phone. Yeah. So there, there may be little bits and pieces that I missed because it kept stuttering as well and go back five seconds. I'm like, what? What just happened? But, yeah. yeah, so Moses, he kicked it out on the pool a couple of times. I'm like, oh, 
it's just not his night. He missed that conversion of the um, the penalty goal. And what was I going to say? I was just I was just surprised by how good all of them were playing. Like despite like you know little bits and pieces here and there, it was actually a pretty good game. And that penalty for hair pulling. Oh, that well that was. This unlucky. is probably going to be controversial, but. Seriously, if you're going to have long hair in a rugby game, I don't care who you are, male, female, whatever, if you're going to have long hair, expect it to be pulled. It should not be a penalty. I agree 100%. If you've got long hair, look, and I can grow hair down my back, and I've done it a couple of times in my lifetime, and now I shave my head just because it's easy to deal with. Right? If you're going to have long hair, fuck you, okay? And fuck your hair pulling bullshit. You you should have tufts of hair pulled from your head in a football game, okay? But to be fair, I thought when I saw that happen, I was like, man, that's just unlucky. I don't think he actually pulled his hair. I think he he just got his hand caught in his hair more than anything. I and thought he went for the jersey and the hair was there. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, the hand got caught. And yeah. And it was it just was unlucky. Yeah, and it was like you could see everyone. He was like, man, what am I supposed to do? And you could see Luciano Leilu was like, you know, my hair got caught. It was just unlucky. Um, I think the big thing to take out of this, though, and there'll be a lot said by Cowboys fans, and I get that. They're going to be upset, especially about that terrible forward pass. Uh, I can actually see, like, I I see both sides. Like, you know, it being called forward and and being called backwards. it, Julie, listen, Julie. It should have been a penalty. It was so badly. Forward. I thought it was like it was more line ball than like you know backwards or forwards. How dare you? Okay, you're being biased. All right. I, I'm not being biased. You're being I'm, biased. I'm pretty level-headed when it comes to eels. As the most unbiased rugby league fan on planet Earth, okay, tell me mm. you're biased. You're unbiased. I'm unbiased. You. When have yeah. I ever been biased? Mm-hmm. When? You point to one situation where I was biased. Every single Penrith game. I can't help if the Panthers are the greatest football team in the world, right? Now, the Will they be the greatest that, if they don't make it to the grand final? No, they won't. They will not. Okay, and this is the thing. Okay, let's let's do the Paramount Eels first, okay? Yeah. One thing I want to say is this. For all of the things that went against the Cowboys, they had plenty of opportunities to win this game. They were up by eight in the second half, and they lost. They had plenty of opportunities to come back after that, and they didn't capitalize on them. That's football. You know, you've got to get it done, and they didn't get it done. Now, my heart goes out to the Cowboys. They've had a rough year. I know it's been a fantastic year, but they lost Paul Green. Yeah. Uh, to to come back from being wooden spooners to where they are and to lose in the second last week That's of the That's astonishing. Y- yeah, it's amazing. It would have been one of the greatest turn- turnarounds in the history of the game. And Jason Taumalolo played like a, a superhero. Right? Yeah, he did. He was amazing. And he was gutted after the game. Did you see him after the game? No, because as soon as um, it finished, I just kind of turned it off and went, hey, yeah, I can broadcast. You are committed, and I dig that. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was gutted after the game, as was Jonathan Aww. Thurston, who was um, who was talking to him. But Aww. look, it's I feel like giving s- them a hug. Yes, it looks so. Uh, I, and I, I don't mean that, like, you know, sarcastically. I, no. I genuinely feel sorry for them. Yeah, they played their asses off. Yeah. But at the end of the day, they um, they had their opportunity to win it, especially there at the end. And and look, you've got to win it. You know, all of the ifs, buts and maybes don't really matter in the finals. You've got to go and do it. And the Parramatta Eels have done it. They have now unquestionably, if I can say the word, won back-to-back important games, big finals games, that was the thing that I've said all year. They haven't won anything. They haven't won a game that matters. Well, now yeah. they've won back-to-back games that matter, and now they're into the grand final. Yeah, can they win the one that really counts? 
yeah. since 1986. Yes. Yeah, my been... my head says no. Why not? Because they haven't won since 1986. So <laughs> it, ooh, pardon me. Um, yeah, it just didn't. It just does not seem like as if you know it's possible. Like you know, it, it's been so long that the belief is like. Yeah, something's going to happen. Mm-hmm. So I'll probably tip against them. Hmm. So you're pessimistic. Yes. I understand. I want, I, I, I want them to win, but... Like... Yeah, don't play a drinking game when I'm on, because you'll hear like a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so don't... So don't play yeah, a drinking game of, when I say like, you'll be catatonic um what was my point um i don't know (laughs) we're in this together though (laughs) i can't even remember what we were talking about i just like went mid like off in this little mini tangent i'm like wait what was i saying i i think that the important thing is that eels are in the grand final How they handle this week is going to be important. And one of the things I was thinking about was this Eels team, no matter who they play, they're going to come up against a team that is seasoned at this point of the season. Um, The the Rabbitohs have been in the preliminary finals, I I think it's five years in a row. They played in last year's grand final. Um, And then there's some players that that were around, like, I mean, uh, Latrell Mitchell's played in the grand final as well, but there were some players that were around when they last played in the grand final and won it. And then on top of that, the Panthers, if they win it, this will be their third grand final in a row. They're going yeah. to be very comfortable in that situation. I would worry that the Eels would celebrate or not handle the week well. Now, yeah. they're going to have a lot of people around them that are going to be very aware of that. And we'll probably work hard to make sure that's not an issue. But it's been an issue for a lot of teams in grand finals leading up to it. Yeah. The Panthers, in, very famously in uh, their first grand final, they had a parade leading into their grand final. Oh, um, that yeah. does not sound good. No, nah, and it didn't. And they lost. They lost to the Raiders. And then the next year, they were a completely different beast. You know? Beat yeah. the oh, that was my point. Mm. If I remember what it was. You're right. This this Eels team, we don't have it next year. So you know how they're always going on about premiership windows? Mm-hmm. This is it. We Like, the Panthers, they've had, you know, this team for, like, what is it, the last three years now? Mm-hmm. So they're still in their premiership window. Mm-hmm. Parramatta, we've got this team this year. Yeah. I don't really know what we've got next year. It's basically a whole new team. So yeah. our prim- yeah. I kind of see this as our premiership window, and then next year, who knows? So we have to – they have to win there because – Yeah, and where did they finish? They finished sixth, right? So yeah. um, did they finish – no, they finished fourth, sorry, because they played the Panthers first week. Oh, yeah. So it's it's – Look, if they take a step back, they're in that bottom half of the top eight at the very least. If they have a really good season, they're going to have uh, Reed Marnie go, and Josh Hodgson will come in. But I, I'd still be shocked if Josh Hod- Hodgson played a game for the Eels. I feel like he might retire. And then you've oh got yeah, that that usually happens. <laughs> yeah. And then you've got Parley, who's going to the West Tigers, the poor bastard. Yeah. Um. And so they are going to take a little bit of a step back, as are some other teams. I mean, the Panthers are going to take a step back next year. But this does feel as though the Eels, this is their best chance. This is a real good chance for them. And yeah. I think the thing between, the, the difference between, say, the Eels and the Panthers is that the Panthers are so young. Like in six years' time, the core of this Panthers team will still be together. Whereas this Eels team will be long gone in six years' time. Like, they kind of have to win now. Yeah, I'm not too sure about that about the Panthers, though. You reckon? Yeah, like, some might demand more money and just 
you know, piss off. That's true. That's true. Look, Kikau will be gone. That's a big loss. Um, they're getting Luke Garner, though, who I have a feeling will be a – he's not going to be a kick out, but he's going to be a bloody good player to bring into the side. Um, just having – Coruscant leaves at the end of the year, which is big. I, I just think that with their junior base and the fact that Cleary is locked in until 2028, I think that that alone is huge. So basically what you're trying to say is the the new Storm dynasty. Uh, uh, Look, I'm not getting ahead of myself. But what I'm saying is, look out St. George and 11 straight premierships. (laughs) 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 Oh, shit. What do you feel? Like, are you excited? How excited are you for the grand final? You've got a grand final week. This is your second... Grand final week as a Paramount Eels fan, right? Yeah. What are you feeling right now? I'm feeling pretty numb. Really? I'm feeling a little bit nervous and sick Ooh. because I'm I'm already going, oh, God, are we going to win this? I'm too nervous to watch. I can't watch this already. You know, mm. I'm going to do the little kid thing of, like, you know, watching between my fingers and – like I'm, I'm excited, but I am so nervous about this because I just think all the players are so happy right now. It's like, yes, we won. We're in the grand final. Is that going to get to them? Is the pressure of hearing we haven't won since 1986 mm-hmm. going to get to them and go, you know? And the last time they made it was in 2009. Mm-hmm. And they went on an amazing run, and they didn't win it. Yeah. Yeah, I. you know, when you line it up against 2009, it feels like that 2009 run, there's a difference between having a run of success like that late in the season mm. and, and being an all-round good football team. And I feel as though the Eels are a little bit, this Eels team leads a little bit more towards being an all-round good football team than it being based upon a run. Where, like, I mean... Yeah, Jared, they're not just relying on one player to win them the game. Very true. And look, Jared Hayne in 2009 during that run was just fire. He was unbelievable. Yeah, he was amazing. Uh, that, that's what really got me into rugby league mm-hmm. that year. Yeah, it's it's going to be. Look, the thing that I love about the finals is that we see it, we see it play out. You know, we we're going to know. Yeah. We're going to know how all of these eels players perform in the biggest game of their lives now, yeah. and. No matter if they play the Panthers or South, who do you play... think will make it? Um, everyone. Talks... You're... Yeah, because you're not because you're not biased. <laughs> <laughs> I think, oh, man, it's interesting. Everyone I talk to says the Panthers, not even close, right? And you heard that in the podcast. Andrew said it. A number of the people I talk to who I really trust with rugby league thoughts, uh, they've all said Panthers will, will do it. Um, the Trung Mitchell is a thing. And I, you've heard me say it all year. Yeah. You've heard me say it from day one of the season, you know. Um, he is something special. He is... He's not quite Greg Inglis special. And I, I lined them up because similar body types, similar moves from the centers. Um, they have similar skill sets in terms of they've got the skill side of the game, but they've also got the, not not athleticism. It's, it's almost like, I mean, they're both the size of second rollers, right? Yeah. Which is unbelievable. Now, Greg Inglis was an extra level. And I worry that this will be the sort of, perf- this will be the game where you look at a Latron Mitchell and you say, remember that game where he joined Greg Inglis? 
And that's what worries me about South. Um, I think as the as the football team, South Sydney Penrith should beat them. But I think that the I think maybe Latrell Mitchell is the most special player in the NRL who can who maybe is the one guy. It's him, Cam Murray. Yeah. Um and and maybe maybe on his day Tedesco can just if they're on, doesn't matter what you do. Yeah, I think I think that it's up to Latrell if South wins or not. No, I think he'll be the deciding factor. If he had, if Panthers can shut him down, mm-hmm. Panthers win. Mm-hmm. If or if you know he has a bad game, Panthers win. But if Latrell's on, South win. Yeah. I'd have more faith in South to win if Adam Reynolds was still there. Yeah, just that that seasoned cool ahead. Yeah, and like just looking at him, you know, you know, the kicks are going to go where they need to. The conversions yeah. are going to happen because I, and that's something that really, really irritated me in this Parramatta game when Kyle felt got that try. And they put try. And then they reviewed it and went, oh, actually, no try. Let's take those points off. Yeah. I was already having a heart attack. I did not need to see, like, you know, the scores level up. It's... Yeah, so <laughs> back from that tangent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that wasn't what we were talking about, damn it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... A South with Luttrell and Adam Reynolds, I'd say they would beat Penrith. South with just Luttrell, it would really, it really depends on how he, he goes to, and that will filter out into, you know, all the other South players. Um, I'm, I'm tipping Penrith to win though. I, I just think Cleary will get them over. Yeah, it's going I, to be it's going to be close. The cool thing that I look at this with is that <clears throat> right now, if we stopped it right now, we could say, "Man, Penrith were a really good footy team during that period." If Penrith win this game and then go on to win the grand final, I think you could say you you then have to look at this Penrith side on a different um, scale in terms of the great teams we've had and the salary cap era and what they've done in three years, three straight grand finals, if they make it, this is if they make it and win, it would be um, it would be a condensed period of success. But when you look at the 20, the 20 wins in three straight seasons, which no one's done, if they That's win two... Ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, and if they win two of three grand finals and their only losses against a, a very, very good Melbourne Storm team with the great Cameron Smith in it, yeah, and they're all so young. Like, this is, I mean, this is kind of still the start of this Penrith team. Or at the very least, it's the first third of this Penrith team's run. Yeah. Um, They could go on to do something very special. If they don't win this game that's coming up and they don't win the grand final, then they go back to what we saw with, say, the Roosters in the early 2000s where, yeah, they were a pretty good team during that time. They won a grand final, you know? Yeah. So it, it it's going to be interesting. It's all there. And the cool thing is that it gets played out in the football field and for all the theory and talk and, you know, predictions and all that, none of it matters because – these players all do it on the footy field. And that was something cool I saw tonight was that this Parramatta Eels team, they had a chance to lose this game. They were down by eight and they went out and they got it done. And now they're in the grand final and all the talk and stuff, it doesn't matter. They're in the grand final. How will you feel if the Panthers don't win tomorrow? 
I think it would be look as a Panthers fan as I said this to Andrew <coughs> in the last podcast if we lose the preliminary final and you had have said to me even five years ago hey you you lose the preliminary final I would have been like wow you mean we're relevant we're in it that's cool yeah. right it's cool to be relevant it's cool to have a team that's there and in the second last round of the the season um I'd be disappointed. I think that the thing that's on the line in, in all of this for the Panthers is the difference between a good run and a historic run. Yeah. That's what it is in it for me. Um, I wouldn't be devastated. I got my grand final in 2003. I've talked about that on the podcast. Last year was amazing. I cried on the podcast a little bit <laughs> after that win. Um, you know, it, it would be it would just be really cool. It would just be really cool if we won tomorrow. So I guess we'll find out what happens, eh? As you always say, that's mm. why we play the games. Exactly, exactly. And I just a, a fucking really insightful cunt. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Well, what are you going to do to celebrate Grand Final week for your eels? Um. I, this is going to sound so bad because every single time I come on here lately, I've had a drink. Uh-huh. Um, I think I might have a drink. <laughs> Excellent. Um, I don't know what we're doing after the grand final, me and Andrew, but if Andrew's not available, you can come on after the grand final. No, you I can don't... come on after the grand final anyway, you know. Yeah, I, I don't know what kind of state I'll be in. I'll either be inconsolable mm-hmm. or, what, what's the word, incomprehensible? I don't know. You're saying. I know. I'm I know. Not... I'm trying to say long words to sound smart. Yeah. <laughs> I gave up on that years ago. <laughs> um, I, I think that, look, it's going to be a fun week. I hope the you'll celebrate really hard celebrate what they've achieved um and this time tomorrow we're going to know who's in the grand final um yeah i'll be uh, able to enjoy tomorrow's game a lot more because i don't my team's not in it who do you want to play in the grand final not who do you think who do you want to play yeah i really don't know yeah I think we both would be very, very hard to beat. Um, Penrith would be nice. So you, if Parramatta won, you can say we we won against the reigning reigning premiers. Like that's, I think that's a pretty good like you know defeat. Yep, yep. Um, if they're against South. I'd, sorry, I can just hear my other kid coughing. Are you choking? Nope, he's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, against South, like I'd like Parramatta to beat them just so I can go, you know what, see, that's why you shouldn't have got rid of Reynolds. <laughs> I, I've got to say, playing South in last year's grand final was cool as a Panthers fan because, or just for me anyway, not so much as a Panthers fan, just because to beat a great club like South, um, I don't know, it made it a little bit special for me. So I think we're whoever Parramatta plays, it's going to be really cool for Parramatta fans. Yeah, I just, I just don't want to be disappointed. Yeah, I get that. Like, and and for me, disappointment isn't isn't them like you know losing the game. Disappointment would be them going up there, being too cocky and thinking, yeah, we've already won this, or even them going, yeah, I'm not really showing up. You know, I'm going missing. The game's out of our hands. You know, I want a Parramatta who's there, who thinks they can win, and will work hard to get it. If they don't do that, that's what I will be disappointed in. Mm. More so than if they lose. Yeah. I feel as though if Parramatta lose the grand final, 
I, I, I think it would be really difficult for them to get back there. Yeah, okay, so I, I can't see when. If we had the same team next year, mm -hmm. I'd be like, okay, there's another chance. But because we don't have that same team, it's kind of like I can't see when we'll get back up there. And will the board then turn around and go, maybe we need to get rid of Brad Arthur? And then who do you replace him with? Yeah, that's that's a difficult one because, like, if they – like, this team is kind of set and if they couldn't get the job done, yeah, will they look at it and say, well, we need changes if we want to go that one step further? Um, it's, it's an interesting one. It's an interesting one. I, I don't know the answer to it. You would hope that their junior development would bring players through that would – if they don't win the grand final, look, they could. We could, You know, in a week from now or, you know, what, fucking eight, nine days from now, we could yeah. be sitting here and saying, well, what, what the fuck are we talking about? You know, they're going to have a grand final parade. Julie's going to be there. Julie's pissed. You know, Julie's, Julie did a, a nudie run out the front of her house. Can't believe it. Unbelievable. No, I'll be wearing my cheerleaders outfit. It, it, Julie sent League Freak all of her cheerleader outfit pictures. It was unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> it was unbelievable. But, <laughs> Never going to happen. <laughs> but I, I lost train of thought where I was going with that. But, uh, yeah, so... <laughs> Paramount, we could be saying Paramount are the grand final winners and none of it matters. But if they lose, it's – I feel like there's a – look, whoever – if Souths lose against Parramatta, uh, they did pretty damn well this year compared to where many people thought they'd be. If Penrith lose, it's going to be a really bad loss for the Panthers and they miss their chance of history. If the Eels lose – it feels like it was a chance that they left. You know what I mean? Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Well, it does to me, but then, you know, we're both under the influence, so. That's very true. Maybe it only just makes sense to us. I wonder if we will listen back to this tomorrow or whenever it gets posted and say, what the fuck were we talking about? No, I think that's the other podcast as well. The other podcast. Oh, yeah. So me and Julie, we recorded a podcast last, was it last weekend? It was last yeah. week, wasn't it? Yeah. And where Julie interviewed me. She asked me <laughs> lots of hard hitting questions. I will post that probably on Sunday. I was going to post that last <laughs> Sunday, but I'll post it this Sunday. And if people don't like my questions, well, tell me what questions you want me to ask him and I'll ask him next time. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, uh, look, I'm very happy for you. I think you'll have a, a fun week. Um, it won't be, you won't be nervous at all this entire week. And you know? sure. it's eight days. It's longer than a week. I'm just pointing that out. Um, <laughs> oh, I wonder if any other Parramatta fan is like feeling this pessimistic. <laughs> I think they are, to be honest. I actually said something really, uh, really good on Twitter before, and I had one of my followers telling me to shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh, was that me? No, no, it was somebody else. Let me see who it was. It was, uh, hang on, hang on, let me find it, let me find it. Uh, come on, where is it? Shut I, the I fuck up. The... It was Mike T, Wolfie <laughs> underscore AU. I, I said awesome. something really positive. I said, uh, what a fight back by the Eels, down by eight, and they fight back. That doesn't make sense. Even drunk, I know that makes sense. Huge win, and he told me to shut the fuck up. Because Paramount Eels fans are pessimistic, and I understand it. <laughs> yeah. When it's been that long, you just, you kind of give up hope, really, I think. Can I ask you a question? Would you cut off your pinky finger to guarantee a grand final win? No. Okay, you need that pinky finger. I get that. That's kind of gross. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Surprised there wasn't a, that's what she said in there. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, shit. We should wrap this up. Um, yeah. Thank you for coming on to the podcast. <laughs> I think... I think 
I've been the more well behaved one this time. <laughs> yeah, you've you've been very good. Been a very good uh I was gonna say host. You've been a very good guest. And no, I can be I, a host again if you want. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to maybe have to host the one tomorrow night, I don't know. But um <laughs> Uh, thank you everyone for listening. Where can we find you, Julie? I'm on Twitter at Eels Dance Mum. Excellent. And you can find me at League Freak No Space. Um, thank you for listening. Congratulations to the Eels. You're into the big dance and enjoy your evening of celebration and your eight days of not being worried. Oh, palm a bit with the big don't argue. Punters will love that. Download our app today and enjoy tackle busting benefits with great promos, great odds, and same game multi this footy finals at Palmerbet. Gamble responsibly. For gambler's help, call 1 800 858 858.